Hi, I'm Dr. Terrence Lee. We're going to talk about how to get pregnant. Now, when you ask that question to the average high school kid, you're probably going to be greeted with some giggling and, and uh, uh, answer of, well, it's obvious. The, the way to get pregnant is to just um, have sex, and that's where babies come from. Well, that is true for five out of six couples. It, for them, it just happens naturally pretty easily. But for one out of six couples, sadly, it's, that's not the case. And um, so the majority of people are insensitive to what infertility couples uh, suffer and that they actually have to think about, you know, why it's not happening and think of what they can do. So um, let's, um, let's start by answering this question. Let me ask you this. What are the different ways to get pregnant? You can think about that. Well, I'll give you a hint. Prior to the 1900s, there was only one way to get pregnant, and that, that is just to um, have sex and get pregnant through natural intercourse. So the way that works is that the sperm and the egg have to come together. Now, how does that work? This is a uterus. Okay, this is a this is a model of a uterus. It's a it's a fairly um, abnormal uterus. There are a few fibroids in it and all that, but um, it will serve nicely for this demonstration. So, these are the ovaries right here. These are what contain the eggs, and every month a woman will release eggs, and when they release, they come out of the ovaries, and then they get into the fallopian tubes. So they, they come out of the ovaries and they get sucked into the fallopian tubes. So they're right here at this part of the tube just waiting patiently for the sperm to show up. Then at the time of sexual intercourse sperm are deposited right here in the vagina and the, some of them will make their way up to here. Now how does this work? Well when the sperm are deposited here in the vagina 99 percent of it is wasted. It will just leak out or it will um, just the sperm will die in the uh, environment of the vagina. The, the vagina is not very friendly to the sperm. It's an acidic environment. Sperm don't live very well in the vagina. But where they, they can um, survive is if they reach here where the cervix is. That's the cervix. And the cervix makes something called cervical mucus. And the cervical mucus helps keep the sperm alive enough that it can um, travel through the great barrier of the mucus and then up here into the uterine cavity. Once it reaches the uterine cavity, if it has any strength left at all, it can make it out here into the fallopian tubes. And if there's an egg waiting and they collide with each other, then fertilization takes place. Once fertilization takes place, then the baby, the fertilized embryo, marches down the tube into the uterus where it implants here and starts growing for the next nine months and becomes a baby. So that is the real obvious answer, right? So again, I asked you, what are the different ways to get pregnant? Well, one answer is through natural sexual intercourse. But there are at least two other answers that are correct. After the 1900s, technology got advanced to the point of uh, doing something that was fairly low tech. And that is just to deliver the sperm right to where the egg should be waiting. And how does that work? That It's done through a process called intrauterine insemination. So here we have a syringe. So a syringe can be used to you know, hold liquid. In this case, we can put processed sperm inside the syringe. So we never inseminate raw sperm because there are substances in the, um, in the ejaculated sperm that can cause a lot of painful contractions in the uterus. And there are also some substances that we would prefer not to be in there, such as bacteria or dead sperm or um, blood cells and things like that. So what we do is we take the raw sperm and we process it in the laboratory until we have a very clean sample. And we also do certain methods um, to separate the best sperm from all the, the bad ones. So um, we end up with a fairly good sample of good sperm here in a syringe and then what we do is we attach it to a catheter. So this catheter then is used right here to pass through the vagina 
and then it passes into the cervix and then the sperm are injected right into the uterine cavity. Once it's injected into the uterine cavity, this this model right here is not physio not anatomically accurate because it shows all this space. But in reality, the uterus, instead of being like a space like my hand, it's more like a closed fist. So this cavity is really just a virtual space. So once you inject fluid in there, there's no room for it to go anywhere other than out into the tubes. Okay, well a little bit will leak out back this way, but most of it will go out into the tubes to where the sperm is. So this is a very simple technique. This is something that they could have probably done in medieval times with, you know, like a reed or something like that and just, you know, ma made up uh, a way to do intrauterine insemination. and. Um, so that's another way to get pregnant. Now this way is better in that the sperm gets a lot, lot closer to where it's supposed to go. Most people who can get pregnant with intrauterine insemination can also get pregnant naturally, but the odds are just better uh, with the insemination uh, because there's so many more sperm that get to where it needs to go as opposed to just having a few you know, sperm make it. Okay. There's one more way. Ever since um, the late 1970s, there was a way where the eggs are physically taken out of the body. Okay, they're taken out of the body and um, brought into the laboratory. Then, in the laboratory, under a microscope, the sperm are injected directly into the egg. And this, uh, well. Sometimes it's injected into the egg. Sometimes the sperm are sort of just sprinkled on top of the eggs. But in, but in either case, in the laboratory, fertilization takes place. And once the fertilized embryos have been created, then we watch them to see which ones look like they're growing the healthiest. Then we select the best ones, and then we take those, and we go through the, um, through the cervix and implant the, um, transfer the um, embryos into the uterus and we want them to implant there. Okay. Um, in fact, we can even do fancier stuff like take um, part of the embryos and do a genetic analysis so we can see which ones are um, have the normal number of chromosomes. We can see which will become boys, which won't become girls, things like that. So the answer to my question of how to get pregnant, there are essentially three ways. That, and that is through natural intercourse, through intrauterine insemination, which is the low-tech approach, and through in vitro fertilization, which is the high-tech approach. Okay, so how does that help you, right? So you are now faced with a situation where you, you want to get pregnant and you haven't gotten pregnant, and you greatly prefer to get pregnant naturally, right? But, I mean, who wouldn't? We all would want to get pregnant in the way that's the, um, the most um, non-invasive, the least expensive, and the easiest. And that's just, you know, through natural means. However, what happens if the natural means don't work? If the natural means don't work, then you have two choices. One is just to be patient and keep trying, keep trying, keep trying until it finally happens. Or the other um, possibility is to go ahead and uh, take action and explore one of the other two ways. I mean, that's pretty common sense, right? So you either, if something's not working, you can either be patient and keep doing that same thing, or you can explore more powerful, more advanced techniques. So the question becomes, well, how do you know? How do you know when it's time? How do you know when it's time to move up to something greater? And that's something we'll talk about in the next lesson. And I'll give you a hint what the four factors are. The four factors to take into account would be how many months have you failed to get pregnant using the way that you're trying right now? Number two, what is your age? Number three, do you have any other clues to suspect that there's a specific problem? Okay, and then number four is just your own personal choice of just how, how, um, how important is it for you to get pregnant sooner than later versus you know if you have a more relaxed approach saying you know if it happens it happens and if it doesn't then then we're fine also. Okay, so um, I thank you for this um, time that we spent together. And um, if you have any more questions, please feel free to visit my websites, and I will see you at the next lesson. Take care.